So now in this video, it's going to be the first video of this series using the 741 op amp. So these are very common and they're not very expensive. You'll see all kinds of literature on them and demonstration circuits. The uh, problem that I think uh, most people will encounter is you need a split power supply to really use them properly. And uh, luckily enough, since uh, DC supplies are so common, I got this one, all it outputs is a single supply, but you can take one of those 741 op amps and split the supply with just this basic circuit. So it's not perfect, there's definitely improvements to be made, but uh, this is good enough for just starting out and practicing circuits. So right now I have the power supply set to 10 volts and we split it in relationship to ground, the output. That dot's just extra, I added uh, little dots here, forgot to uh, delete that uh, and uh, so some people really get annoyed if you don't have dots where there's connections especially since this one has a spot where there's no connection so they'll usually leave a straight line if there's dots but I like the little jump we'll kind of zoom in and look at that a little bit closer so some people use dots for connections and uh, some people use no dots and a jump. So I use both on here. So hopefully everybody is happy. And so in any case, we will grab the multimeter and just take a quick look. So the point of this is ground is uh, basically halfway between the supply voltage. That's what a split supply means. That way in relationship to ground, so there's 10 volts, we lost a little bit, to the uh, resistance within the jumpers and stuff. There's ground and we have, once I connect to some metal, there we go, 5.1. Uh, so basically five volts and then negative five volts there. So it's not landing perfectly. We got offset null pins, I think will uh, shift the voltage a little bit where that lines up better. But we're not worried about precision in this video. It's just the uh, basic. Uh, electrical properties that we're looking at. So 20 volts, we can see that we will first check the rail again and uh, see that we got 20 volts, but in relationship to ground, our zero volt reference point, we got 10 volts and uh, negative 10 volts, just off slightly. Now another thing, and we could go 30, we'll get 50, 15 I mean, and 15. Now there's another thing, the uh, ground or not the ground, the output of the op amp, which is ground now. The output has short circuit protection. So we can go from the positive rail or the negative rail there, and it's gonna take current both ways. But the, uh, the amount of current is limited by the op amp. So first we'll go right there. So the multimeter does not have any resistance when it's measuring current. And right now it's measuring milliamps. We'll zoom in to uh, look a little uh, closer. If I wasn't sure this had good short circuit protection, I would go to the amp range. And uh, actually I have the meter, the uh, power supply limited in a uh, current, so I wouldn't need to do that. But if I didn't know for sure, there you can see we had uh, 22 milliamps and uh, interestingly enough, the current is going down. So it looks like as it warms up, it actually uh, lowers the amount of current that goes through it. Now we'll go to the negative rail. It's gonna be a negative current. But there you can see, so this is a short circuit. That's uh, not a good thing. You don't want to uh, short circuit it. But if you accidentally do or something, then you will have uh, protection there. You won't destroy anything, hopefully. You know, it's, I don't know that it's perfect, but it looks like it's pretty perfect so far. And uh, so that's also the uh, maximum current we would get out of any load, of course because it, this doesn't know the difference between a load or a short circuit. It just limits the maximum current. But it's nice that you have that short circuit protection. And so we'll look at the pin layout coming up. Uh, main thing is for this circuit, we just power it and we take the non-inverting input and we take a couple equal value resistors. So one of them is to the positive rail right there this is 100 kilo ohm. These inputs do not take any current in other than some leakage. It just looks at the voltage. So we have a basic voltage divider. That resistor to the negative rail, that resistor to the positive half of the power supply voltage. And since we have the uh, feedback there to the inverting input from the output, it's going to 
change the output as needed to hold those voltages equal. And so we will look at uh, the pin layout right here. And so depending on where you get the pin layout for this op amp, it may be labeled a little differently. So I like the uh, VCC plus and VCC minus, but you may see BEE. -E. So that goes from the transistor, uh, I don't know what you would call it, uh, nomenclature or whatever, where they use VCC to show the positive side of the power supply because that is where the collector of an NPN bipolar junction transistor connects. And then you may say VEE -E because the negative side of the power supply is normally where an NPN bipolar junction transistor emitter, E for emitter, connects. But uh, some people might just write uh, VCC negative. So that's actually what one of the data sheets wrote. And uh, the other data sheet wrote VEE. -E. And also it said uh, uh, just VCC, I believe, over uh, there. But in any case, we can go up to about uh, the uh, recommended is really no more than 15 volts and no more than a negative 15 volts when it comes to the power supply. So that's the same as 30 volts, but this is not made for a single supply. So it, it sticks with the plus minus 15. And uh, ultimate maximum though for both of the data sheets I saw, I looked at one for the LM741 and one for the UA741, which it looks like you can just swap them out. It looks like they have the same value so far. And uh, I think it's just different manufacturers, but they made exactly the same. So supply voltage, that's absolute maximum. And then input voltage for the pins, that's absolute maximum. So it's lower for the input voltage to one or the other pin than the maximum power supply voltage. So you, you may want to always keep it a, a little bit lower, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. But in any case, here's the recommended values. So five positive to five negative, that's 10 volts total, or anywhere between that and uh, 15 positive, 15 negative, which is the same as 30 volts. Also on the data sheet, it shows the short circuit current, current short circuit plus or minus 25 milliamps. And we did see that uh, when we shorted it, it was below that. So now let's quickly take a look at how the output is operating now. So we have a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor, a couple of them, because I have the single supply set to uh, 20 volts right now, and uh, so we'll have 10 volts. But we could go to a 30. Let's actually go to 30. So the 2.2 uh, kilo ohm resistor can handle 15 volts. And so it's either going to go one way or the other half of that uh, voltage. So half of 30 is 15. And so we can take a uh, red LED, doesn't matter, but uh, the red LED. And I'm going to put the line lead, the anode, up one row from this jumper that goes to the output of the op amp there. So short lead, the cathode's going down there. And we can take a 2.2 uh, kilo ohm resistor go to the positive rail and it lights up so right now the output is sinking current we think of current in the conventional current uh, terms of going from positive through the resistor through the LED and then sinking into the output right there and uh, so now we're gonna move it over here and just kind of work in positive up down towards negative other than it going back up there so we're gonna put this here so the last one we went positive and then negative that way. But uh, now we're going to have positive coming to the LED. And so the uh, line lead, the anode, goes to this jumper that goes to the output, our virtual ground, we can call it. And then we're going to take the uh, resistor, put it to the negative rail, and it lights up. So right now we have the output as the source of current. Again, remember, we're looking at this as if it's going positive to negative. That is how circuits are analyzed. And uh, so, fortunately it's like that because of a confusion early on about how electricity worked, but uh, this works. And also, now, we can see that uh, we got the output positive. It is the source of current, and if it 
provided a set amount of current would be a constant current source but it's just the source of current right now it's not constant the LED and the resistor mostly the resistor setting the current but the LED is blocking a little voltage so another thing we can do just modify this slightly so we have the uh, red LED here let's pluck this and keep it like the schematic we're gonna put the resistor it's getting a bit warm uh, we're gonna put the uh, resistor to our virtual ground zero volts right there and we'll place it there I'll move it over a little bit and uh, doesn't want to go into that spot so we'll stick it being real difficult in this area so in any case we're gonna take the uh, resistor here set it to ground and then we're gonna put the green LED where the cathode the short lead is uh, down one row the long lead the anode is going to go to the resistor that goes to ground so the long lead the anode is connecting to that resistor we're going to put the red LED the opposite direction so the uh, cathode is going to the uh, virtual ground there or zero volt reference point the green jumper there actually the resistor before it goes to the green jumper long lead the anode is going to go down one row so I have anode to cathode and then or, uh, yeah anode to cathode and then anode to cathode over there now we're gonna take a jumper and uh, this is my first time shooting this and I think it's gonna make the video so it's not uh, being spoken as clearly as it would be if I made a bunch of mistakes so in any case we're gonna go to the positive rail and something went wrong and that's because I didn't connect the resistor to that jumper I was off one spot there we go so now the uh, positive input right there you can see it goes through the red LED the way that we wired it if I put this to the negative jumper you can see that the green LED lights up that's because this is more negative that makes that more positive and so currents flowing through the resistor and that LED I can't go through that one that one's reverse bias has to go through that one that one's forward bias so here we made a polarity indicator and a nice thing is that uh, 25 milliamps of current is a little too much for these uh, LEDs but still probably not horrible they may have a slightly shortened life but uh, if you power them at uh, 25 milliamps for a long time looks like we're actually looking at uh, probably closer to 21 22 milliamps but uh, in any case we do have that short circuit protection so that is nice too but uh, this is just a simple polarity indicator circuit right there that uh, works pretty nice you could use an op amp for that if you happen to be using a split power supply or, or whatnot but uh, in any case which we made out of the op amp in this case so uh, that's it for this video hope you enjoyed Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.